Nostalgia Cat here. Today is going to tell by the title. I am going to be talking about um, Glenn Martin DDS. This is a little different for me to do, but I wanted to do it because I wanted to talk about this because I have a lot to say. I'm tired of talking to myself. And um, I didn't want to post it on the status post, like every little detail, because I keep going back and whatever. So, Glenn Martin DDS uh, is a show that aired on Nick at Night. Um, starting in August of 2009, it was about a middle-aged man, Glenn Martin, um, who was a dentist. He lived with his wife, his oldest son, Connor, and his youngest daughter, Courtney, who also had an assistant, Wendy, because she was like this big business girl or whatever it was. And it was in stop motion. The animation studio that did it actually also did um crash box and something else i can't remember it didn't last long if i remember correctly i don't remember when it ended i just remember when it started so around this time i was about seven years old when it started and i um always i saw it air on nickelodeon like not no i didn't see it air on nickelodeon i saw it promos of it on nickelodeon and that's something that always stuck with me um because i always have the show pop in my head pop up in my head every few years um and that's something that i always remember i'm just like i know nickelodeon air pr pr advertised the show during the day because how else would I find out about it? I mean, I mean, there's obviously, there's other reasons, but anyway. Thinking about this show, looking back on it is such a nostalgic out of body core memory, if that makes sense for me, because November, 2009, same year it aired or started, my parents divorced um because it was not long after my birthday and I just remember seeing the promos I saw the first episode and I saw the second episode like the Amish episode I have no memories of any other episodes but those and I remember one specific time watching it it was before my parents divorced I was in my basement they had come in from playing outside or something whatever it was my dad was in the basement. He had a little office area a few feet away, a few steps technically. And my mom came downstairs and she looked at the TV or stared at it for a minute. Then she went over to my dad and asked what I was watching. He was just like, I don't know. My dad apparently, I recently found out, only let me watch the things I did and stay up as long as I did because he wasn't paying attention. But anyway, um, moving on. This moment in time, it's so it's so specific for me like I have a lot of these uh memories for this time and it's like such a such a short specific time in my life where I've had all these memories and all this stuff happened or not happened but you know um so it is very nostalgic for me I also was really into the stop motion style I saw it as claymation because that's what I was into. Um, and Glenn Martin DDS comes off, um, as at least to me, as some sort of sitcom, like an adult sitcom with like a cartoon twist to it. I always felt like it gave me, it always gave me the, this vibe that it was what all the adults were watching. Like this is what adults watch when they come home from work and, you know, wind down after you know the day this is the kind of thing they watch um please ignore my cat i as a child didn't understand the jokes um the stories you know went over you know meh. you know as a young kid i just didn't you know get everything and looking at it as an adult you can tell when there's moments where they expect you to think that it's funny and it's not. I was watching an episode the other day and um, there was a moment that happened and I thought to myself, I know that was supposed to be funny. 
but I'm not laughing. Another reason I saw it as a sitcom is because, um, if I remember correctly, they also had like a laugh track in it at some point, which is also super weird. I don't, I don't get that, but, um, you know, I think about this right now and I'm making this video because, um, the other day I was browsing YouTube, it was like my day off, and I was looking at Will Vinton stuff, and this show popped in my head again like it does every few years. And I thought, I wonder if Will Vinton did this, because he did the PJs and stuff, you know. No, he didn't, but I looked back at it anyway. And I usually, every time I think about the show, I look at the first episode, skim through that. The second episode, skim through that. And um, this time around, I'm wanting to, like, watch, like, more than those episodes. I want to watch, like, the whole series because I'm just so, like, amused by the art style. The stories are okay. The humor is, uh, you know, the humor falls flat. But I like... The animation style and Glenn himself I don't know why I'm so like intrigued by his long face it just makes me want to watch it and just like see it again like I don't know so I might watch the entire series I also as a kid was very frightened by some of the scenes and I'll get on to that later so as I explained before it was being advertised during the day and there's evidence of that too which there's probably like clips playing of it or something over the what i didn't realize until i looked into this is that they targeted it at tweens and there's even like a behind the scenes or whatever and i'll probably include it where they claim it is a family show like a family comedy it's for the family it's gonna be super silly and fun for kids to watch but then their parents are gonna watch it too and their parents are gonna be like blown away by how smart it is it's funny and i think kids get the show is and will be the best family comedy i don't understand why nickelodeon and whoever you know the producers or writers or, or i don't know i don't know who or why thought Oh yeah, this is for, you know, the whole family. Um, maybe like a 15 and older teen, but definitely not a tween. I mean, I think maybe Nickelodeon is desperate for views or maybe trying something new and it just... Or I also believe that Nickelodeon was er per advertising it during the day, assuming that adults were in earshot of the TV or paying attention with our kids were watching and um you know we've come to realize that no that's not what happened and it reminds me of um the Cartoon Network PSA about like hey you need to pay attention to what your kids are watching and do like parental control and whatever um that was pretty interesting because um not a shocker no one was paying attention to what their kids were watching um but I think Nickelodeon thought that's what was happening and thought, oh, the adults are going to see it and be like, oh, yeah, that's not at all what happened. Um, because I saw the advertisement and was like, oh, I want to look at that. I want to watch that. So that was, you know, that kind of backfired a little bit. I also believe that parents should be in earshot of what their kids are watching and doing. Like, yeah, there's privacy and... I'm not saying, you know, look over your kid's shoulder every five minutes. I'm saying when it comes to letting them watch TV and be especially on the internet these days, um, you need to be at least in earshot of what they're doing. And if you're going to give your kids cable television access, you definitely need to be uh, in earshot because if a child, which most figure it out because i was like four or five years old when i figured out how to use the remote know how to use the remote and um can change the channel so and there's also the fact that even though something's airing on a kid's channel what if like you have certain things you 
don't want your kids seeing or hearing about or knowing about or you just have your strict rules I you know, I'm thinking about like because I know some families because I grew up around Christian people who are super strict and like didn't want their kids to watch cable and whatnot and were super strict about what they watched um so just because it's a kid show doesn't mean there's necessarily going to be everything that you're okay with um there's also that the internet we all know why you should supervise your kids on the internet i saw a lot of things i sh probably shouldn't have been watching um not anything inappropriate but like jump scares and like scary videos like i watched spongebob saw and like evil barney things that like scared me and i shouldn't have been watching them but no one was paying attention to me and i honestly don't regret that because I have some fun memories to look back on and I it was just fun times you know um which leaves me conflicted because now I don't know if I should always supervise my kids when they're on the internet or let them explore a little bit and find those scary videos and whatnot sounds awful I know but I think I'm just gonna show them like the videos I watched when I was a kid, like the scary stuff I saw when I was a kid. I don't know. But... Which reminds me of the Nick Mom situation. And I think I'm gonna make a video on that too because I have been going back to that for a couple, like a year or two. I'll go back to it and I'll like have my opinions and you know. If you can hear the neighbor's kids, I'm sorry. They're so unbelievably loud. So it was claimed to be a family show but there's so much gore. Like, and it's unnecessary. Like, it's not funny. Like, it's stuff that, like, really scared me as a kid. Like, there's even shots of, like, Glenn Martin's face. I know I don't have to call him Glenn Martin, but... um, Like, their faces, when they, like, s screamed or yelled or whatever, sometimes their faces just scared me. It was just so There's weird. a lot of gore. Um... So who looked at that and thought, yeah, that's real funny. That's, you know, kids should see that. Or it's okay for a tween or a teen to watch that. Like, I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's appropriate. And um, there's a lot of, you know, sex jokes and um, just inappropriate jokes. Like, it's not, there's, I know for sure, because we're about to talk about it. I know for sure there's like, uh make out sex scene if you're gonna include it any sex act or whatever it's not a family show it's not for tweens it's not for teens um it's for adults if you're gonna include anything sex related it's not for the family like no. so on my journey of looking into this show because i don't remember exactly what i was doing on this the wikipedia page but i found a section called controversy i'm like Ooh, I love some good controversy with, like, TV shows and stuff. And it said that a woman from Florida, um, it says, from 2009, I really don't know how to pronounce this name, and I'm not gonna try and pronounce it right, so. A lady from Florida was outraged that the series contains sexual references despite airing at 8 p.m. Um, immediately after Spongebob. This, um, I know Wikipedia can be edited by anyone, but it also says that um, the Nickelodeon spokesperson at the time, who was David uh, Bittler, I believe is pronounced, um, had said that complaints were minimal. Um, but this uh, paragraph also states that it did eventually move to Friday nights at 10.30 p.m. Um, so I went ahead and I looked up the month, year, in this woman's name. And the first thing you get is like pictures of like, you know, you look up her name and it's just like uh, IMB, or no, not IMB, um, I don't know what I'm looking for or trying to explain, but, you know, women with that name. And then the first thing to pop up is Nick Show Stirs Pot Tampa Bay Times. Um, 
I need to mention that when I was talking about the Wikipedia page and reading the controversy section, I was quoting that. Um, and also, I am quoting this. I am reading directly from this article word for word. Uh, if I go off, um, the interview article, whatever you want to call it, I will state that. Um, St. Petersburg uh, physician um, going off because, I don't know that name, arrived at her home after a meeting Monday night and wasn't surprised to see the TV on Nickelodeon said she lets her four kids ages 11 and under watch Spongebob Squarepants as a reward before bed. When the sponge went off, the new network's new show, Glenn Martin DDS, came on at 8 p.m. So, make sure I'm right. Um, I'm not going to say her name, so I'm going off for a second. Um, I'm going to refer her as the woman. Because um, I really don't know how to pronounce her name. The woman snapped to attention when she heard, Makeup sex is the best coming from the living room and she turned around to see her 11 year old watching two cartoon characters in bed together the female character unbuttoning her blouse and the male lying on top of her um the woman quote this was at 8 20 p.m end quote um after shutting off the tv she checked out clips of the show online and found more problems with with it um, like a gag about a car's GPS navigator using a sexy voice and innuendos to direct the driver to Moorhead, Minnesota and Climax, Florida. The woman quote, It would be one thing if we were on at 11 at night or was on a more adult network, but Nick targets kids, end quote. For the first time in her life, she signed angry letters to a network. Um, I'm going off. Um, it says... Um, going to um summarize it says that she's not the only one upset about it um nick.com message boards were filled with furious parents um and it's not just the raunchy humor okay that i actually quoted um the violence um is extreme um What's funny is I'm looking at this and quote Bittler, David Bittler, there's n certainly no ploy for pl publicity. This is a funny show for Nick and I audience, for the Nick and I audience, which is 18 to 49. Um, end quote. And then quote the woman, they don't need to take it off the air, but they, but can they push it back a little later at night or at least give us a better warning? Okay. Um, end quote there, obviously. The issue with this, and if you saw my community post, you probably already know what's coming up. I found this episode that she was referring to when I was because like I had mentioned earlier I was like amused by the show and I've actually um like yesterday when I posted the community post went ahead and like looked at a few episodes um and I accidentally found it um I was trying to at first I'm like there's no way I'm gonna be able to find it but I did on accident this moment that this woman was upset about specifically please ignore my cat was 13 minutes into the episode and from my point of view this in this article insinuates that she was in earshot um she never necessarily says that was insinuated that she was because she, um she just said that she heard she never said how far in she heard you know um 
And like I had brought up earlier, I don't really think you should turn on the TV and walk away. I mean, it's Nickelodeon, but I mean, it's 7 p.m. or whatever. I mean, there's Nick at Night, of course, you know. I mean, they play like Full House and George Lopez and whatnot, but I mean, still. From the words she heard to this character unbuttoning her top, was a good 17 seconds. And I even went ahead and tested it out. I started the clip a few seconds before that word. I got up, I stepped away. I'm gonna move my dress for over there. I heard it, looked up, kind of like pretended to look around confused, like, I'm sorry, what? Turned my head a little bit, turned around, looked at my laptop it still hadn't happened yet the unbuttoning still hadn't happened um so there's also the chance that she went she saw it when she went to um change the channel or turn off the tv or you know coming in for a closer look or whatever it was but i also believe that she wasn't in the room when it happened she before, I mean, a good, maybe a good minute or so before she heard it, she had stepped into earshot. But that whole 13 minutes, I mean, the word that there were more inappropriate words that were said within that 13 minutes before that. Sex wasn't the one of the worst words said before she heard it. There was other words, but I'm not going to repeat them. Um, they're not cuss words, but I don't feel comfortable saying one of the words, so. Of course, we all know now, a days, with tablets and mobile devices that parents hand their kids a mobile device and the kid walks away and they're, you know, they're not paying attention. But is it hard to believe that it was the same case back in the 2000s as well because that's what my parents did my you know i mean my, i think my mom was always in earshot unless i was in the basement but that's because uh our house was so small um my dad never paid attention in fact he was in earshot and still didn't pay attention like so you know, you turn on the kids network and you think whatever, you know, but, you know, I watched Adult Swim when it came on at eight or nine o'clock. Um, so I don't think it's that hard to believe, you know, and this article states, oh, it was a Monday night. She just got home from a meeting, 7 p.m. So she's showering, getting ready, getting herself ready for, you know, winding down or putting the kids to bed or about to make dinner or whatever it was that she was doing. And she was not in earshot. I also want to say that I don't necessarily think, oh, you have to be a perfect parent and have to hear everything your kids are watching. Like, um, because I stated that, you know, she could have been making dinner, or taking a shower or whatever. Um, you know, she's a busy adult. You know, she can't always, you know, you know, be looking over her kids' shoulders, see what they're watching. She's got to, you know, so you flip on Nickelodeon and you think, you know, whatever. Um, but I also think that there was a better way to um, deter this, um, possibly. Part of me wants to think, you know, tell the kids, you know, don't watch anything other than Spongebob or whatever, don't change the channel, don't, or something, but it also, it always comes back where it's just like, well, why would someone say that to a kid? Like, make sure you're only watching whatever. I mean, there's no point in that, I feel, if you're turning on Nickelodeon. But I also think, well, there's the guide. It's almost, like, certainly this woman knew about Nick at Night, right? right like maybe I, I i don't really know i think that 
in the end, she was not in earshot. Like, she insinuates, and she just said it for the article just to look, so she wouldn't look bad. But yeah, I walked away. It's, you know, my fault, really. But, moving on. I also do not think that this woman is completely at fault. I think that 8 p.m. is a little inappropriate. Sort of. It's pretty early, like 9, I would understand. Like, Adult Swim started at 9. And somehow, parents of us 2000s kids, somehow us 2000s kids parents knew about Adult Swim. Because I hear about it, you know, all the time in the comments of Adult Swim videos. Like, oh, you know, I knew I wasn't allowed to watch and, you know, my parents, blah, 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 whatever. So somehow our parents knew about that. But not Nick at Night? Something? It was completely inappropriate for Nickelodeon to promote the show during the day. That is completely inappropriate. That was uncalled for. They shouldn't have done it. You know, that was a mistake. You know, should not have done it. And it should not have been targeted at families and tweens. That was completely inappropriate. And I think they sort of knew they were in the wrong for that too. They shouldn't have done it. To sum up my thoughts here a little bit. Things like this intrigue me, please. And you my cat, please. And you my cat. Because I can't help but think of right then and there in that house when it was happening. And I know that sounds weird, but my mind is weird. It's just so interesting for this to be a situation that happened. I honestly think it's ridiculous that this woman walked away and was not paying attention to what her kids were watching. In the slightest. I mean, think about it though. You know, she, the TV's on at 7.30, she's aware of it. She walks away for about 43 minutes before she notices. Like, think about it. She says it was at 8.20, but I think, you know, commercials and overtime and or run overtime, whatever they call it. She comes home at 7, sees the TV on, you know, Spongebob was playing, 7, 7.30. Why at 8.20 p.m. were all of a sudden you present? Why weren't you present at 7.45? Like, why was it 43 minutes before you took notice? Were you, like, away from the children for 43 minutes? Just oblivious to what was happening for 43 minutes? It just kind of doesn't really add up to me how I mean it adds up how someone could be in you know ignorant but I mean it just doesn't make any sense the way she puts it as if she was there and she was listening and she all of a sudden it like popped up on the screen like a freaking jump scare or something like it's interesting that those kids saw 13 minutes worth of that show and saw some pretty inappropriate things and because mom wasn't paying a bit of attention for about 40 something minutes. Like I said, things like this just intrigue me and it reminds me of the Nick mom stuff too, which I think I might make a video on if I enjoy working on this one. Um, this If this is your first video you're seeing from me, um, this is it's what I typically do. I typically do like 2000s, 90s nostalgia and you know, other things like that, commercials and fun stuff but this is something new I wanted to try because I wanted to you know speak my opinion on it because I have a lot to say but I hope you guys liked it like I said I think I'll do Nick Mom in the future when I get the time so yeah